in one of the previous videos, we went through the conversion script for converting one note to Markdown using PowerShell, which we'll see here. Some people have been having issues with it. I'm one of them on a different computer. I also couldn't get this to work. It seems pretty finicky. Um, so through the COM API, I was able to get something working in Python. So if you'd like to try converting your OneNote notebook to Markdown to get away from the proprietary Microsoft format into something plain text that you control, use this script. It's really simple to use. You just clone the repository and then the readme has instructions. Just make sure you have Python installed. Use pip to install the requirements. Open OneNote, make sure that it's open, which I don't have open right now. Sometimes you might have to delete the cache or the settings. Once OneNote is open, it's as simple as running convert.py. And right here on my desktop, the OneNote, the OneNote export folder is empty right now. But we'll see that it gets filled out as it runs. So we'll do python convert.py. And just like that, it has gone through all of the pages in all of the sections and even subsections and grabbed the text on the pages along with the images, which it put a link in there to them. So if we look for this matrices page right here and we open it up, we'll see that it has a reference to 000 matrices, which is the page 000.png. So the first picture in that page and then the second picture in that page, which is 001. And if we go in here in the assets folder, you'll see those two images. That's nice because if we open this in Obsidian and we go to these pages, you can see that they're already set up for us. No extra linking required. It's pretty much exactly as it was in OneNote. Couple things to note. I'm not sure if the images work all the time. I have a note in here that it assumes everything's a PNG. We'll get into how it works in a second, but it might not be a problem because everything might be a PNG already. Another thing that doesn't work is if you have voice clips in here or attached files or anything like that. It's only exporting images. If you're curious how this works, the whole script is only 109 lines long. The main method uses the win32com API to grab a handle to the open OneNote application. So it'll fail out if you don't have the application open already. And then it uses the API to get a hierarchy, which is an XML document essentially. And then it parses through the XML document and handles each child. So basically the overall hierarchy just tells you a few things like which notebooks are open. And then from that, each notebook has an ID and you can use it to query again, get another hierarchy based on that ID. And that's basically walking the entire tree. So it gives you a reference to a notebook. You can walk through each child of the notebook and handle the element. You can see that this is a recursive method. So the same thing happens for sections, section groups. And the only thing that's different that's not just handling its children is the page. And we're passing down the current path within the notebooks, like which notebook and section did we walk through to get here? And I being what page number are we basically? And just walking through the tree. And the special one being handle page, which we see does all the action. It basically figures out the path to everything that we need. And here's where the magic happens. It's using the OneNote export functionality to Word, which Word gives us a nice written format for all of the words in it, and then uses Pandoc to convert the Word document to Markdown. But the Word export and the Pandoc conversion to Markdown does not include any pictures. So we also publish to PDF. A lot of the crashes from the previous version were coming from, from what I could tell, HTML exports, which has dodgy support. I think it was supported and maybe it was removed. If you go to the publish window in OneNote, it's not even there, right? You have MHT, but that's, that's not it. There's a couple more values in this enumeration that aren't shown in the GUI, which makes me think they probably removed support. Either way, we get it in PDF format, which is well supported. And then we have this extract PDF pictures function that goes through that PDF, grabs the pictures and saves them in the assets folder. And then we fix image names, which goes into the markdown file that we generated earlier and renames each image, which has the stock name of image one, image two, image three, to a new unique name so that Obsidian can pick up that unique name and go find the file wherever it is. And that's about it. This safe string method, all it's doing is making sure that we don't have any special characters in a file name, which would cause some errors. And that's pretty much the whole functioning of the script. So hopefully this was interesting. Hopefully it helped you. And if you run into errors, leave a comment, let me know. Hopefully less errors than the last version. And for sure, feel free to fork this, make changes, make it better, fix errors, and I'll be happy to review them and merge them in or whatever works best. Either way, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching.